Hello and welcome to Getting Naked with Happiness with me, Stephen Liu. In this snippet, we hear from Roslina Chai, an organizational consulting expert on creating inclusive work environments in Singapore. In the main episode, Roslina and I talk about what marginalization at work looks like and some of the steps that we can take to make inclusive changes in our workplaces. These snippets are standalone episodes where we tackle more specific questions on organizational improvements, but I will highly recommend that if you are a manager or a leader in a company and you are interested in making holistic changes in your teams, check out the other episodes in this series. Roslina shares so much wisdom on this topic and I personally have learned so much from the conversation with her. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so it sounds like it's a situation where top leadership thinks it's important to be innovative, inclusive, diverse, agile, all those sexy sounding buzzwords yep and they are disconnected with the actual reality of their organizational culture because they have not identified the levers and triggers that would prevent this dream from coming true and they issue this top-down desire and expect people to just run with it how would an employee in this kind of organization balance the actual day-to-day reality of a no speak out, don't take risks, do what I say because I'm the boss culture with the dream of behaving in an agile, inclusive, innovative manner, right? Exactly. Hmm. You ask a very difficult question. And while I don't think I can give anything close to a definitive opinion, what I can offer instead is a way to think about this dilemma if you are in one yourself. My proposal is step one, be honest about what you really want in life at this season of your life. We have the luxury to live much longer now. So I don't think we need to feel very rushed to achieve everything yesterday. What that also means is I'm counseling people, listeners, to be honest about what they want and not what they think they should want because society expects them to want those things. My father-in-law, for example, was an extremely savvy corporate person with no ambition to rise through the corporate ranks. Because he recognized this about himself very early on, he was able to enjoy the 50 years he spent in corporate and it ended on a very good note. So he never wasted energy vying for promotions or feeling like he has to sabotage some of his colleagues to get something. That for me is a very hopeful way of showing up at work. So that's step one. Step two is not to shy away from asking for what you want based not on what you think your boss wants to hear. So when I say don't shy away from asking, that of course does mean that you do need to have certain skills in communicating and asking for what you want, what you need. But if you can find a way to make clear to your boss, to your coworkers, what it is that you need, Very often, I find with age that people are actually not reluctant to give you what you need. Now, how they give it to you may not be your cup of tea, 
But when presented respectfully, I find that most people are actually decent. They want to try to help. And the last and step three is if you have done all that and you still don't get what you need, adopt a mindset that is more helpful because like Henry Ford say, whatever you choose to believe, it's true, right? And maybe it's not your time. Maybe something better is waiting around the corner. Some people may call that rosy glasses. Why be so optimistic? I would say hope is from the strong. Cynicism is too easy. My husband, for example, had wanted to move on from his position and he applied for internal moves so many times and so many times it didn't pan out for one reason or another. And after three years, uh, even I was getting a little bit like, what's going on? The move that he made, it was as if it was just waiting for him. And within a short time, and even to my surprise, he was able to achieve amazing things because it was meant for him, right? Had he accepted some of the earlier positions, I think it would have been a bit of a struggle because we were trying to make it fit because there is this narrative in our head that, yo, I've been in this position for so long, time to move, man. Mm. Sometimes if it's not time, it's not time. And moving too fast can actually be detrimental. Yeah. I think it's important that if you can find your own voice within yourself and to know what you really want, and that will make um, a, a big break. And of course, I like the part about being able to communicate what they want and what they need, and especially to bring this quality of conversation to their coworkers and also to their bosses. I think this will really crystallize and form an authentic conversation. Mm -hmm.